we have Ona Nelson. Come on up. Ona Nelson dropped out of a PhD in linguistics and cognitive science in 2015 and currently lives and works in Silicon Valley. In her spare time, she enjoys hiking, biking, gaming, and making garums. All right, go for it. Thank you. Uh, so uh, how many of you think that rent prices are too high in San Francisco? All right, that sounds like just about everybody. So. Uh, I have some good news for you. My colleague and I have come up with an interdisciplinary approach to solve this crisis. Uh, we've all seen one of these charts before. Uh, rent is outpacing inflation. Um, the housing crisis has a lot of analysts very worried. Uh, people are blaming everyone from uh, the tech industry to avocado toast. Uh, <laughs> So uh, rather than look at you know, tech workers or avocado toast, the typical uh, people that get the blame for this, my colleagues and I decided to look at uh, different aspects of this crisis. So the first thing we did is we looked at different cultures and how they solve their housing needs. Now some cultures, like metropolitan areas, have very tall buildings, but these have very various problems. Uh, metro areas like New York and San Francisco have very high rent, uh, high crime rates, and high income inequality. Now, if we look to mythology, we find that... <laughs> <laughs> Our ancestors warned us against building too high. Uh, the Tower of Babel, for example, was stricken down by God uh, <laughs> for reaching for the heavens. Uh, likewise, uh, Icarus had his wings melt when he tried to fly into the sun. Uh, so another approach is suburban houses or uh, villages, and these are cheaper, but they have disadvantages of they use a lot of land and a lot of resources. Uh, so again, my colleague and I turned to mythology, and <laughs> we found that dwarves and hobbits uh, live very low to the ground or often underground. And both of these cultures are known for being very happy, very prosperous, and very wealthy. So with this in mind, we came up with our hypothesis. <laughs> we decided that housing prices are higher where buildings are taller. So we decided to dig into the data. Um, so here we have 12 different cities that we use in our sample. We have high cost of living areas in red, so places like Seattle, uh, low cost of living areas in green, places like Boise, and medium average cost of living areas uh, in yellow, which are places like Grand Rapids, Michigan. And for each of these cities, we did two things. We found the tallest building and the median two bedroom rent price. And what we found is <laughs> I know it's laughably obvious, isn't it? <laughs> In the low cost of living areas, the buildings are very short and the rent is very low. And so everything clusters in the bottom left quadrant. Uh, but as you get into higher cost of living areas, the rent goes up and so do the housing prices until you eventually reach uh, the high cost of living areas where we have San Francisco in the uh, topmost uh, dot and New York in the rightmost dot. Um, <laughs> so it turns out that this data is linearly correlated uh, with a Pearson's correlation coefficient of 0.81. So you might be wondering, well, when you have data like this, you want to apply some data manipulations to it. So we did. <laughs> and it turns out that if you apply a log scale to this data, it becomes even more correlated. <laughs> but going back to the raw data for a minute, 
uh, you can actually summarize the data with a very simple formula because it is a linear correlation. Uh, y equals 0.85x plus uh, 47 where y is building height in meters and x is uh, housing price in dollars. Uh, now, you may be looking at this formula and think, you know, wow, like living underground or living above ground or too far above ground is unaffordable. <laughs> and you'd be right. So, It turns out that the folks at Millennium Tower have already apparently heard of this research and they're sinking their tower by 10 inches. <laughs> but my colleagues and I don't think that this is enough. See, 10 inches is only 0 0.254 meters. <laughs> And this only yields a monthly savings of about $3 a month. So we recommend sinking the tower even further. <laughs> about eight and a half meters uh, for a savings of $100, which would be enough for your weekly avocado toast brunch. <laughs> now, another thing you might have noticed is that the scale... <laughs> <laughs> because it's a linear correlation, uh, the line can go infinitely in either direction. So theoretically, we can extend this uh, past the original data and expand the axes. Um, so if you're actually living in a city whose tallest building is at ground level, you're actually earning $500 a month. <laughs> And of course, you can keep projecting this <laughs> uh, further and further until you get a build, uh, city whose tallest building is 150 meters below ground. You're actually making more than $2,000 a month. Um, now, of course, because it's a linear correlation, it has theoretically no limit, but there are practical limitations. <laughs> So if you're living in a city whose tallest building is situated at Earth's core, every month you'll be earning about $75 million. <laughs> now I know this sounds like a lot, but it's only about, about how much Jeff Bezos makes every two days. <laughs> so by now I think we've convinced you of the economic benefits of living underground, but you might be wondering about some of the other benefits. Uh, so we came up with a few. Uh, first is weight loss. <laughs> when you're living underground, less of Earth's uh, mass is below you, so there's less gravitational pull, so you'll weigh less. Uh, this might have implications for the obesity epidemic. <laughs> uh, the second thing that we found was that by living underground, there's no longer any incentive for coastal cities, so we don't have to worry about the floodwaters from global warming. And finally, uh, living underground is kind of a built-in nuclear bunker, so <laughs> in case of nuclear war, we'll all be underground anyway. Um, so with that, I'll open the floor to questions. <laughs> all right, Carl has a first question. Yes. Um, I, I was concerned that maybe um, people's happiness might be a factor because <laughs> of the lack of sunlight. And so I was, it occurred to me that recently um, the genome of the naked mole rat has been sequenced. Now, the naked mole rat is a mammal like we are and actually lives naturally underground, is very small, and can, so you can get a lot of naked mole rats in, in, in a burrow, and, and, and they, they quite like it there. And so my question to you is, would we be able to um, improve on these benefits, do you think, if we could use uh, CRISPR <laughs> to engineer designer babies with key naked mole rat genes 
so that children would be born uh, as naked mole rats, <laughs> whom we could insert down tubes into the ground, and then they could actually dig their own apartments with their giant teeth. Uh, I think that this is great, and I think that that also uh, solves the problem of people worrying about their kids living in their basements. <laughs> Maggie? So, as a Midwesterner, I am, it, it behooves me to ask you how exactly it was that you came to find out about the secret underground cities of Toledo. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wasn't aware of the secret underground oh, shit. cities of Toledo. <laughs> Ignore everything. But now all of the San Franciscans are going to stop escaping to Portland and now go to Toledo. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, thank you very much.